Good morning, everyone. We're going to ask our leader to come up um, and direct us into our program this morning, Ms. Uh, Frenchia Ellington. Give her a hand as she comes. This is no easy fiat, I want you to know that. Good morning, Shore College. Good morning. Good morning, virtual colleagues. This is our weekly chapel of assembly, September 9th, 2020, and I am your leader, Frenchia Ellington. I got fog on my glasses. First, we're going to have a prayer by Ms. Bianca Conley. Canley, I'm sorry. Good morning, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to gather together. God, we ask this morning that you would give us wisdom. God, we ask that you would give us peace where we've been shaken. God, we ask that you would just allow us to pause a moment and to inhale your presence and exhale all of our worries, all of our anxieties, all of our woes, all of our trials and tribulations. And we say this morning, God, we trust you and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to expand our minds on this morning. Continue to lead and guide us in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. And next we will have a scripture by our own SGA president, Mr. James Morgan. Then we will have a scripture by the Reverend Mary Williams. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, um, one through five. And I'm gonna ask you to please stand for our statement of faith. And that also will be read by the Reverend Mary Williams. We are asked that you will uh, share with us, uh, with, that you will read along with us as we're reading our statement of faith. Shorter College is an African Methodist Episcopal Church sponsored school and is shaped by the Methodist traditional understanding of sin, grace, and the possibility of full salvation for Christ-like living. Shorter College embraces the and we believe that there is but one living and true God, everlasting, without body or parts, of infinite wisdom, power, goodness, the maker and preserver of all things, both visible and invisible. In the unity of this Godhead, there are three persons of one substance, power, and eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who is the Word of the Father, the very and eternal God, of one substance with the Father, took man's nature in the wound of the blessed virgin, so that the two whole and perfect natures, that is to say, the Godhead and manhood, were joined together in one person, never to be divided, whereof is one Christ, very God and very man, who truly suffered, was crucified, dead and buried, his father to us, and to be a sacrifice, not only for original guilt, but also for the actual sins of men. We believe that Christ did truly rise again from the dead and took again his body with all things appertaining to the perfection of man's nature, wherewith he ascended into heaven and there sitteth until he returns to judge all men at the last day. We believe the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son is of substance, majesty, 
and glory with the Father and the Son, very and eternal God. We believe scriptures contains all things and that the Bible is the inspired word, infallible and authoritative word of God. You may be seated. At the time, do we have any announcements? No announcements? Oh yeah, we have Dr. Gerber. Good morning, Georgia College students. How are you all? Hey, Miss Williams. How are you? Hey, Shorter College. Hey, Adrian Long. Hey, Crystal B. Hi. Hey, hey Martha Stewart. Hey, Kenya Bradford. How you all doing? Hey, Miss Henson. Hey, Meddlesome, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, everybody out there. How are you all I'm doing? <laughs> it's Wednesday, y'all. It's chapel time. And also, you know, during chapel time, we always have, have announcements and we have good things and we have not so good things sometimes to say to our students. And so, but, but I like to say, that um, those that are on the line, um, which I'm talking to the choir. What's your name? Yes. Adriana, hi, how are you? Good, good, good. I think I got your name from Miss <laughs> um, Carbona. Okay, the other day, because uh, you have something coming up tomorrow, you and Luis, right? Okay. Um, but what I wanted to say, nice to meet you. So what I wanted to say is, is that I'm talking to the choir, so I know what I'm about to say does not pertain to any of you all, but if, it, if you know somebody that this is, that, that it does pertain to, we're asking for your help, right? So listen, I know, and I'm gonna kind of repeat what I said last Wednesday. And I, and I still see it even in my class, because even after I go on and, and recall students and talk to students, Ms. Kenley has been calling and talking to her class and other faculty members are calling and talking to their class, is that what they're saying to us is that they are afraid of Canvas and really don't know what to do. Don't know how to access, don't know how to get in, um, some people are, may or may not have their shorter college email, which could pose a problem for them getting in. So if you know or are talking to any of these students, would you please let us know who they are? And I'm gonna use one of President Green's uh, things that he usually says to us in our meetings. We wanna help everybody get, we wanna help everybody cross the finish line, right? We want to help everybody cross the finish line. So we can't help them if we don't know. If you know, because they talk to you, right? Students talk to you. Zoom land, students talk to you all, right? So I'm asking you to help us, um, help us identify those students. I was looking back because I was trying to read what, what was being said. Um, hi, Marcus. That um, you all talk to students, so you all know who ha who's having problems and who's not having problems. So I'm soliciting your help to help us help those students that are may that may be having some problems. Okay, because in the end, if the institution fails, the student 
then we all fail. Even, and, I, and I'm gonna uh, say even you, the students, because if you know something and don't share it, and you tell me about it, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna ask you, well, why didn't you tell me earlier? Maybe I could have helped or saved that student. Maybe that student didn't, didn't have to feel like that they had to um, quit. So I'm asking you all to, um, to help us with that. Okay, Monica? <laughs> so I'm asking, and even you, the, those that are sitting here or on, the, or on Zoom, if you're having problems, please don't wait to the last minute because we're here. We have success coaches that, that, are, that are willing to help. Um, we have faculty members that are willing to help. And so don't get, don't get lost, as they used to say when I was in school, don't, don't get lost in the shuffle. Does anybody know what shuffle is? What's shuffle? And what else do we shuffle? What else do we shuffle? Huh? A deck of cards. Private life? Yes. Uh, but there's a game that, that you also, or something else that you, you, you um, shuffle. Cards. Thank you. So you know when you shuffle cards, you have one on this side, you have one on this side, and you put them together, right? And then once you get it shuffled, then what do you do? No, you cut the deck, right? Well, the game I play, <laughs> the game I play, you cut the deck and then you shuffle because I want to make sure that those cards are in my favor, right? Well, okay. Some people don't, okay. <laughs> Everybody does not shuffle the deck, all right. So what do we do? We're gonna, we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to win. That's the, that's, the, that's the object of the game. We want everybody to have an opportunity to win. So you can't, I can't help you win if I don't know your situation, right? We, we can't help, Reverend Mary can't help you if, if she doesn't know your situation. We don't know that until you tell us. And guess what, the other thing is, when we think that we have things right, or it should be going the way that we think it should go, it's not always going that way. And we need you to tell us that it's not going the way that we think it should go. Yes, ma'am. Reverend Mary's gonna speak to that uh, in a minute. She's gonna, she's gonna speak to that. So I'm just asking, I'm just asking everyone to, to let us know if you're having problems, issues. Getting into Canvas, getting onto, signing onto the computer, um, accessing, because sometimes when you, when you go to college, you know, they have to give you your, your email address and then you have to sign on. Sometimes that, that may not be working because I've been working with the students that say, hey, I have my email address, but I can't get it. I can't get into anything. So let us know the most, the most minute thing that you have an issue with. Even if, guess what? And I know that I have some faculty members. I saw Michael Harris on early. There he is. And I see Ms. Bush on. And Ms. Lockhart is on. Even if you're having some issues with faculty, if you can't get into the Canvas, if you can't access their their assignments, let us know so we can help. So we can so we can change that. Dr. Blanchett is, uh, is here. So, and then the other thing that I ask you to do too: utilize the facilities on campus. If you're having some issues at home. And um, I know that in the beginning, we said that students couldn't come on campus if they had not had their um, COVID test. And that's true too. That's true. I'm not saying that that's not true. But what, but what I would ask is 
that you not neglect your education because of, because of a barrier, okay? I ask you not to do that because we can't help again if we don't know. So any questions, concerns about anything before I, before I give um, Reverend Mary the, or Ms. Francia the, the mic back? Anybody have any questions out in Zoom land? Type your questions and, I, and I'll be able to answer if I can. I want to step away so I can see. Ms. Fields, you have a question? No question? Okay, I thought you were raising your hand. Okay. All right, no questions. Anybody out here have a question? All right, again, thank you for coming to chapel. It's good to see your bright and shining and smiling faces. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Gilbert, for that LCC, for that love, care, and concern. And next, we will have a presentation by our very own Reverend Mary Williams. Thank you very much, Ms. Um, prior to um, the presentation uh, for today, I have um, uh, asked Ms. Paisley, oh, let me recognize Mr. Rick Watson, too, who's uh, sitting in the bleachers, uh, one of our own faculty uh, staff members uh, here at Shorter College, very good guy. If you need to talk to anybody, guys, uh, feel, feel free to walk in. Is that okay, Mr. Mr. Watson? All right, all right. So if you need a helping hand, if you need some assistance, Mr. Watson also knows how to put together if you are in need of a job, he could possibly help you for that, with that as well. But I'm standing here to, prior to the presentation, to uh, let you know that uh, we, uh, as Dr. Gilbert has stated, uh, we are meeting faculty and staff are meeting weekly, uh, trying to decide how we're gonna move forward and what can, what if any, we can do to help our students here at Shorter College, those who are via Zoom land and those who are sitting before us. So what we've done is that we have asked Ms. Paige in Boston, and hopefully if you, if, you, if you already looked at your email, you should have gotten an email yesterday uh, asking for students who are very savvy with uh, computer skills and who knows how to go in and out of Canvas. Uh, if, if that be you, uh, we can use you to be a part of a committee or a team, if you will, uh, of 10 that we're going to use to help us train all the students via Zoom land and those who are sitting in front of us, those who has not checked in yet with us. We're going to reach out to you to let you know that we want that you that we have help and assistance for you here on the campus of Shorter College. Now, yesterday that email should have gone out. Hopefully it did, we did receive some uh, responses back. So hopefully all of you received it. Uh, these 10 persons, which will make up a team, will come in uh, and Ms. Hanley, uh, raise your hand. Uh, those on Zoom cannot. Uh, Ms. Shockley, the um, uh, student success coach, uh, and also Mr. Kevin Holloman, who is the other student success coach, uh, are, along with myself, will be present to pull this team together. And we're hoping that we can pull them together by Friday. We hope to hear from everybody by Thursday. So by Friday, we will have, uh, we will be able to pull together a meeting telling you where we're gonna go from here. And hopefully next week, we can get that, those teams, uh, that group of team members to call you and ask you to come in and or whatever it is that you need to come and, and, and sit with us and we can train you one-on-one. Uh, not only can we train you one-on-one, but we're gonna use this team to help assist going forward. Uh, if you are slow or don't understand your assignment, uh, some of those things we will be able to assist you with as well. So uh, I need those team members uh, to, I mean, those who received the email to hurry and put your name in the, uh, in the box, uh, whomever you're supposed to 
submit those na your name too, uh, so that we can pull you together. Now, those 10 uh, uh, team members, what we're going to do is we're gonna utilize your skills by uh, setting up what we call internships for each and every one of those persons who are working with us. If you can work with us well, we're going to be able to use you as an intern and pay you hourly wages. So please come and see what we have so that we can get moving. Uh, before we know it, uh, school, it will be the end of the school year. You do know we have a short year this year. So we want to make sure that we get all of you, that we do not let any person fall behind. And that's what we have for you uh, today. So please sign up. Uh, please let your success coach know whether you can assist or not, and we will be looking at those who are savvy and who can move forward on, uh, in the training that we have set for you. That's, 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 uh, that's my announcement. So now one other critical and important thing is that this, this morning we have um, a video for you. Uh, I hope that all of you who are sitting out can see it because I can't see very good, um, can watch the video. Uh, it's about census. Uh, I don't know about you, but 10 years ago, um, uh, the census piece came and, and left. And when, when all of those persons, when, after it left, there were so many persons who had not been counted. And especially in our black neighborhood, they had not been counted. In our black and brown neighborhood, they had not been counted. And so usually after every census, the very next day, they began to start working again on the next census, which is 10 years later. And that's what they've done. So they're wanting, make, wanting to make sure that no person is left behind. If you, so what we're going to do is next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, set up a, an office where you might be able to come in and ask to help you assist you in filling out the census form so that you might be counted. It's really important that you know how important census is. So because of that, uh, we have um, their, their, little, their little videos, uh, YouTube videos, and so they only last about uh, four minutes, some five. So we have four, and I think it's going to equate out to about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, Mr. Payne has pulled those together. And we're going to ask that you would listen to, the, I mean, watch those with us. Uh, Mr. Payne, we're ready. And I believe that census day, the last day, as I can understand it now, is September the 30th. But please be counted in the census. Legislation that would have taken the Census Bureau national hand. Time, folks has failed in Congress with the court. Democrats have been making the argument uh, that that needs to actually happen in order to properly count the U.S. citizenship. Republicans have their fighting. Them seriously when it comes to the United States Census. Joining us right now is Congresswoman Barbara Lee of California. Congresswoman, how you doing? Good, Mom. Nice to be with you. All the good. Everybody's healthy in your house. Oh, everybody's good. Everybody's good. So we're just uh, staying away from everybody else. We're still a long time, but learn uh, to wash your hands, put a mask on, uh, and social distance. And so it's all good. Uh, let's go back to the Census bill. Um, that's part of the issue in terms of where we are now. We are behind. Uh, and uh, of course, a lot of Democrats want it uh, to state that Republicans are not trying to participate. And of course, many people are concerned that this is going to result in a massive undercounting of people of color, which means that billions of dollars we don't get. Yes, Ron, and that, that's who they are, the Republicans. I hope people remember this uh, in, in November. But also, Donald Trump has, has put the deadline up by one month to September 30th. And let me tell you, in uh, 19, you know, in 2010, excuse me, we had uh, 47 million to count. Now uh, we've got 60 million left to count. 
And it's outrageous because given COVID-19 and given all the uh, challenges we have, uh, compressing this time to uh, count unsheltered people, residents of nursing homes and dormitories, it's outrageous. But also, Rowan, well, in addition to the huge amounts of money and funding for our community, the political lines are driven based on the census count. So you have two things going against the different factors, deadlines have changed, and that our people are counted. One, we don't get the resources, and two, uh, our voices are not heard in the political body. Uh, we do. Country, and so we have to fight hard to make sure that if you can't turn this around, that we do the uh, census in a way that uh, we meet those deadlines and that we're counted. One of the other issues is also outreach. How do you do those communities? Yesterday, we had Congressman Stephen Horsford on, who said that when uh, he met with the Citizens Bureau and the ad agents, the assignment national contract, Young and Rubicam, also done as well. I offer. IR, they made clear they were not buying any newspapers under 50,000. That means virtually every black newspaper in America. Uh, we submitted a proposal and they never heard from them. Other black media the same as well. And so he, and I was told that black media was supposed to get uh, around a hundred million dollars in terms of outreach and black media had to bring that pennies. So part of the issue also the other account is that, is that not only because of COVID, you couldn't knock on doors, you couldn't have massive events. If you're also not doing anything with black media to drive the message, then our people are not hearing it every single day with the drunk you're, you're absolutely correct. And I know this because we've had many meetings and overnight hearings with regard to the census. And uh, you know, what happened is these companies, they get the resources that, that we appropriate after is appropriate on the appropriations committee. They make all these promises, then they do these contracts, and then they back out of the promises they, that they made. And so this is just, uh, hopefully we'll have some hearings and we'll begin to unpack how all of this happened on the census. But in the meantime, we've got to make sure that uh, we get as much as we can out of them. It's obscene that they don't uh, invest in uh, ads in black media, and that they lie about who they're going to work with, and then, uh, get the money still. I mean, I, I wish there were a way we could hold up these contracts until they do the right thing. So you have the month of the This is another example of this white supremacist agenda that's being run out of the Trump White House. You got August and you have September. So you got less than 60 days uh, to get the messaging out. What are the Census Bureau saying as to how they're going to achieve that? Well, they're not saying much. Uh, I think they, uh, in many ways, uh, some in the Census Bureau don't really mind because they're Trumpites, others, uh, you know, are really concerned. And, and so they're scrambling now trying to figure this out. But I can tell you, like in California, for example, we have a 60% return rate, but in the Black and Latinx community, it's way, way down. And so we have to do a lot of outreach and we have to hire people from our communities now to really uh, do the outreach that's necessary and try to get more money towards the act. You know, a lot of, uh, especially African American seniors, they may not uh, be online, for example, or have broadband access, internet access. And so that takes the extra step of going uh, within a COVID uh, protocol to uh, find out, uh, you know, how to help them uh, and tell them how they can do it by the mail or by telephone. So this is a heavy lift that has to happen. We knew this going into it. But then the Trump administration just pulled the rug out of everything to try to make sure that uh, black and brown people and seniors and the unsheltered population and young people aren't counted and low income people. It, it's outrageous. This is another example why we have to vote in November. All right, Congressman Bartley of California, we sort of appreciate it. As I said to Congressman Horsford, uh, I certainly hope that the CDC uh, demands an audit of young and rural camps to know exactly what every dollar went. Uh, what black media outlets, what black owned media outlets that are full accounting of what happened. Because I talked to somebody who was working with the system for a very long time, and I was told this exact same thing happened in 2000, 
Same thing happened in 2010, now in 2020, are they enabled to hell on a black PR at ad agencies? Yeah, you have to just know that I'm not, no, I'm going to ask for an audit because we appropriated that money. But I want, I wish we could do something before you. Right. And in fact, in fact, in one of those, in one of those top black ad agencies, Carol A. Williams, right there in Oakland, uh, one of your constituents, uh, and that YR has closing them out of this process. They were supposed to be the multicultural agency, and they have been given them the runaround as well. That's the kind of that's one of the reasons why black media cannot black media, black agency, and black business overall can't grow when we're frozen out of the dollars. Again, another example of systemic racism. Yep. In case anybody doesn't understand that, I just want to put that out there. It's true telling time. This is a manifestation of what we've been talking about and what the movement has been about uh, since four for four hundred and one years. Yeah, that's why I want to show today where is our mind. I just been the folks. Uh, when I spoke in Cincinnati uh, for the Black Agenda there, so that's why I got it all. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Bill. Nice thank time. you. Let's go, let's go to our panel right now. A. Scott Bowden, former chair, Matthew Bar Association, Pat Powell, Patillo, Executive Director, Rainbow Push, the Coalition's Peace Tree Street Project, Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president, and mayor of the Bay of Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, on you because, look, this is this, this a money thing. The census is about money. Okay, it's about uh, determining uh, alignment of uh, districts uh, in terms of uh, boundaries, but also it's about the annual 1.5 trillion that is spent in this country. And when we are not counted, that's money that's not going to black neighborhoods, not going uh, to Latino neighborhoods, that's money that's not going to our schools and our roads. I mean, it impacts everything in this country. It absolutely does. It also uh, impacts the drawing of congressional lines. But on the money side, I wish that I could ask the Congresswoman, I need to hear a text. Why can't they pass legislation that said you have to do X, you have to have this much subcontracting, et cetera? I mean, they put conditions in all kinds of legislation. And then it seems to me this would be a place really to put conditions in. Carol Williams has been a seasoned um, advertising professional for a very long time. She should have a piece of that. But, you know, these, excuse me, white boys, you know, it's interesting. They want it all. They really don't want to share. They want nope. it all. They're building on us. No, and that, that, that's precisely it. And Robert, that's what Operation Rare Basket came from. Uh, of course, more into Rainbow Chris Coalition. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying this is how we uh, are constantly remaining broke, having to beg for people, and then they throw out a couple of pennies for nickel. Uh, and then uh, throws it out, and, and we're seeing, so now, not only are we screwed in terms of the black ad agencies, and not only are we being screwed when it comes to the black media companies, well, if you're not getting the work out there, undercutting us, black people across the board get screwed when it comes to the city. If you're completely right, and part of it we have to understand that, you know, first day political science class, the first one they teach you is the question of who gets what when. And what you're determining who gets what way is all based on population. We're going to have redistricting, redistricting, and reapportionment uh, all around this country. What we saw in 2010, the last time we did this, was that black folk were, uh, were systemically gerrymandered, they were red lined, they were packed together into congressional districts, they were broken apart uh, into, uh, to take away their voting majority. That's why you get into a state like Georgia that has a 35% of African American population, but a constitutional majority for conservatives in the House and the Senate. Statewide uh, offices are held by Republicans are not elected a Democrat in over a decade. That is because of realignment, reinforcement, uh, gerrymandering. And if we do not answer those specific questions, if we do not put ourselves in the arena to, uh, to determine how exactly we will get access to the resources, we will be frozen out again, not just on the small business side, not just on the economic side, but on the political side. Uh, when we're talking about passing any of these uh, large uh, generational items that people are in uh, large agreement on, the way that you don't get those passes or having 60, 65 percent of the American people agreeing with them is by playing with the rules, I dare to and I'm blocking people out of the process. The thing, the thing Scott was here, people don't understand political dots. Let's just look at this way. In the last 20 or so years, 20 or 30 years, there's been one party that has been consistently one to other count America. Republicans. And there's been one party that has been trying to count as many folks as possible. Democrats. This is where uh, elections have consequences. 
and you're actually seeing this here. For Republicans are not only on a federal level to try to undermine the system, but in these various states. Texas, for example, say we're not going to put any more money towards that. You're going, idiot, don't you know that you're actually costing yourself? But this was by design. Republicans have not been wanting to properly count folks because they frankly want to have as many white folks as possible to basically cut of the influence of uh, minorities. What's the party of racism? I've tried to avoid using that term, but it is the party of racism. And this is Donald Trump's gift to the future GOP party. That is getting less resources, investing less resources in our communities of color. It is the Mitch McConnell he gives to the future of the GOP party by the judicial appointments of incompetent people who are not approved by the ADA. The, the Republicans cannot win unless they have a policy of voter suppression. If they, if they have a policy of lack of investment and disenfranchisement of black and brown people, they want to cry foul, the R word. They want to say that they want more people of color in their party, but their actions say just, just to say something very, very different. We can call it out on them, but the reality is we need to vote. And we need to stand in line and vote, and we need to vote in large numbers all across this country. Because not only can we beat voter suppression, but then we got to fight to make sure every vote is counted. So look for November to be the showdown. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. This is the most important news show or television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this to keep this going. What you've done wrong since this crisis came out of the building. Anybody watching? Okay. All right. This information is for you to educate you on what's going on in our cities. Are we having like technical difficulties or what's going on?
communities of color in general, in general, are frequently undercounted in the census. And so if we have 700,000 men and women who return to our communities each year who were formerly incarcerated, they can change the course of the political effect by participating in the census. Africans of every age group from 18 to 50 are undercounted in significant numbers. Most importantly, seven out of 10 black children were not counted in the last census. Over $1 trillion are allocated to communities across the country based on the census count. That's a lot of money, a lot of money for breakfast programs and Head Start. So that's a critical issue. The Census Bureau has a policy of residence criteria and they count incarcerated persons not in their home community. They count them in the location of the prisons where they have been locked up in. It's unfortunate because those are dollars that go to communities in rural, conservative, typically white populations. And it's basically nothing but prison-based gerrymandering. You know, people are aware of the power of the numbers, and they also are aware that this country, if with every tick of the clock, is becoming browner and browner. So there's this death grip on the status quo and the whiteness of America that is fading and disappearing with every tick of the clock. So you ask me about what is April 1, it's a reference point. It's just a national rallying reminder. You can go online and fill out your form until August 14th. So if you wait till August 14th, you'll probably have had several visits by a census enumerator. For coronavirus notwithstanding, um, you probably will have a knock on the door asking if they can help you with your form. It's about democracy. That's what this is about. The census is the cornerstone of democracy in this country. Your place in a democratic society is what's at stake. This is a 50 year old button. Yeah, the Urban League, this was a, um, uh, 50 years ago, that was their census um, motto, logo was make black count. That's it for our videos. Did you enjoy? Did you understand the information? If so, give me a give me a hand clap. I, I really, I really think. I, I mean, it's really important to me that our black men uh, receive their just due. It's important to me that our black communities, period, black and brown, receive our just due. The only way we can do that is by making sure that we are agents of change. We can be agents of change. Those of us who are sitting in here, I dare you to go home on today and ask your family members, your sisters, your brothers, uh, your uh, children, your grandchildren, if you will, if they have made sure that they filled out the census form so that they can be counted. You, you many times, uh, I have a, and, and I'm going to say this and then I'm going to, uh, we're going to dismiss, but I have a sister-in-law who comes over to visit quite frequently. And when she comes over, she'll say, well, um, you don't have potholes in your, in your, in your road, on your street. You don't have potholes. Well, um, have you taken the opportunity to check to see if everybody in your community filled out the census form because it makes a difference. Pell grants, it makes a difference. Your attendance in school makes a difference. If you if you are not able to attend school because you don't have the funds to do so, the census makes a difference. All of that makes a difference. What about your children and your grandchildren that are coming forth that will need to be schooled in, in, in both private and public sector? The census makes the difference. So when we leave here, just go ahead and make yourselves agents of change and make a difference in your neighborhood. 
May God bless and keep you is our prayer for you as we move forward on a brand new year. But uh, just look forward to next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We'll have that uh, email going out to all, uh, an announcement going out to all students uh, to make sure or to check to see if you uh, have filled out your census form. If you don't know how, come to our office next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and we will see to it that you are able to go into the system and with our assistance, and we will help you, all right? Thank you so very much. God bless you. Now, oh, uh, you have something? To, okay. Yeah. Here, here's Miss Frenchia. All right. Go ahead. On our closing remarks, just briefly, a word of encouragement. You know, I heard Dr. Gilbert do an LCC cry talking about love, care, and concern. I also heard Reverend Mary. And I watch a video and I love Roland Martin. I love him because he's keeping it real and he exposing everything and putting the truth out there, you know. And I did a study on the AME faith because it's one of my classes here recently. And I saw why the AME faith was founded. It was because of social injustice. And, you know, I'm sitting here listening to all the plea and all the cries. You know, and we're talking about as a race, we want to move forward. God has shifted the paradigm in the heavenly atmosphere. It started in the heavenly atmosphere and it's trickling it down to the earthly beings who are us. And we need to get involved. He done pulled all the covers off the institutionalized systemic racism in our colleges, in our uh, uh, schools, in our uh, voting, in our uh, census. God can pull the cover and expose all of that. And all we need to do is get involved. Put our name on the dotted line, y'all. Let's do the census. Let's register to vote. Let's make, make those numbers rise because there is power in numbers. And we got to start somewhere. God can already shift the paradigm in the heavenly realms. All we need to do down here on earth is follow a little guidance. Thank you. All right. Let's get to your hand. Move that on today. On today, on today, I'm going to ask Ms. Frenchia, Ms. Marilyn, Ms. Sandra, uh, where is that, Mr. Easton? I'm going to, and Mr., who is that right here, Mr., what's your name right there, your last name? Mr. Prop, you all come to my office on tomorrow morning. I want to get us started with trying to call every one of these students to see if they have filled out a census form. Will you come to my office tomorrow morning at 10? I want to see you in my office so we can check to see if the student uh, of Shorter College has filled out a census form. If not, we're going to get their name and we're going to see if we can walk with them through every step of the way. If we are going to be agents of change, I'm going to deputize you on today. Please stand those names that I've called. I know that I, I volunteered you myself. But I need your help. And if you're going to be agents of, of, of change, we need your assistance. So I need you to follow me and say, I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will do my best. That I will do my best to make a difference. To make a difference in this world. In this world. By calling our students. By calling our students. At Shorter College. At Shorter College. By calling our children. By calling our children. Our siblings, our, our grandchildren, our, our friends, and our neighbors, call on them to fill out the census form. To fill out the census form. I now deputize you as agents of change. Thank you so much. And we're going to keep those names close to us so that we can call you if you don't. We don't see you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gilbert, once more, we don't have to, and I left, I totally left it off the program today, I don't know why. We apologize, but we're going to go ahead and dismiss. We don't have the uh, alma mater and Ms. Gilbert Hayes brought it to my attention. Uh, we definitely will have it next week, and we're going to try to have a musician as well. So thank you for coming. Thank you very much. I hope that it will be well before you, and most of all, I hope it was informative. Thank you.